universe. I'm sorry, but a warp in space-time that massive and powerful would most certainly have some effect on the bodies in our solar system, wouldn't it? And the fact that we cannot detect even one single ounce of such a powerful force is proof that the heliocentric model is nonsensical. Another way to look at the fallacy of the heliocentric model, which is not stationary, is to imagine how the Earth should behave as it travels at 18.5 miles per second around the Sun on average. I don't seem to understand how the Earth is supposed to somehow accelerate well beyond the speed of the Sun at times, basically stand still at other times, and ultimately behave in such a way that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever and should therefore be stricken from the record as a viable theory, especially considering the world is demonstrably flat and stationary in the first place, so the entire heliocentric model is completely nonsensical at its very premise. And again, this video is a unnecessary as a, in a, as a whole. If you consider, however, the velocities involved with the Sun going around the galactic center and the Earth going around the Sun, it's physically impossible for the Newtonian physics or even relativity to explain this type of phenomenon. The Sun is supposedly constantly tugging the Earth towards it. However, it's totally apparent that during certain portions of the Earth's orbit, the Sun must not only be repelling the Earth, but also causing the Earth to accelerate many times faster than the Sun itself is traveling around the galactic center. All of this garbage theory, which does not st stack up to theoretical scrutiny, here it is. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Well, when you add the red lines described to the path of the Earth, some questions arise. The same questions arise if the Earth's orbit around the Sun or are anything similar to the supposed non-existing sun's path around the galactic center, heliocentric views are antiquated, illogical, demonstrably false premises which might be plausible with a stationary sun. However, the fantastical displays of logic-defying maneuvers expected to be performed by bodies in orbit around a larger body in motion prove that our entire understanding of the universe, and specifically our solar system, are totally confounded and demonstrably false. So this example here is the perfect solar plane at an angle to the galactic plane instead of being in accordance with the galactic plane since we want to take a look at both. So to be balanced in this examination of the heliocentric galactocentric model, I've also considered the notion that the solar plane is at some other angle to the galactic plane as opposed to being in accordance with one another as shown in the previous animations. This also looks neat and pretty at first glance. However, there are many, many problems with this model as well. People tend to theorize or visualize space-time in two dimensions as that is the way in which we're taught to understand it, and it's the easiest way to visualize it. I should mention that space-time is not two-dimensional by any stretch of the imagination. However, it's critical that we understand the importance of this difference. Okay, so if the sun's warping of space-time is to be visualized by looking at a large, flexible fabric stretched taut, and you drop an item into the center of that fabric, it's going to warp the fabric towards the ground. This is where we can visualize the warping of space-time in a 2D or, you know, kind of a 3D capacity. The distinction between this example and actual warping of space-time, which is all theory and is actually false, uh, but, you know, this would actually be causing such a warp, which would be equal in all directions, attracting objects towards the center of that warp from every direction at once. So, when you see the Earth orbiting the Sun in this example, it might seem logical. But if you consider the force of gravity should be compelling the planet towards the sun, the vortex pattern shown by the Earth does not appear to be affected by gravity, as described by Einstein as a warping of space-time, which does not exist. Should be tugging in from all directions, not just upon a single plane. So when you consider the motion of the center of orbit being the sun, and the Sun moving through space at a right angle to the galactic plane, our solar plane, that is, being at a right angle to the galactic plane, it totally contradicts the theory of a mobile Sun around which we orbit, 
according to Newtonian or even relativity or Einsteinian physics. How can the blue latex example of space-time and gravity possibly make sense in a system that is three dimensions but is also constantly, constantly in motion? The theory of gravity falls apart if you rationally consider the bodies being in perpetual motion round the bodies in perpetual motion round the bodies in perpetual motion. There's simply no way to account for all of this intersecting velocities which should cause all sorts of wild inertial effects, especially standing here on Earth. However, we forever remain motionless, fixed and immovable, and the heavenly bodies are obviously orbiting around the flat Earth with their center of orbit it being fixed upon the North Pole, which is a magnetic field extending up and out to all the edges of the world, known as the southernmost region, or Antarctica, the conventional model. The blue spandex example of space, time, and gravity is a laughable example of the stupidity and ignorance of modern physicists, who never consider the medium which all bodies are warping is stationary, while the bodies are in motion, causing all sorts of issues in three-dimensional, high-velocity objects, always in constant, often in contradiction, flux, which is never accounted for or even considered by modern scientists, who have all been tricked into believing they live on a spinning globe since they were just little nerds playing with chemistry kits and eating their boogers. Now, with the red line with an angle to the solar plane, in this example we'll show the red line representing the Earth's path around the sun in a model where the solar plane is at a steep angle to the galactic plane. You can see that other problems with the circular rotation of the Earth around the sun are apparent. What is causing the Earth to continue orbiting the sun in alignment with the solar plane if the solar plane is constantly traveling at a right angle to the the galactic plane and the earth is compelled to stick to that plane as if a bar was somehow coming out from the sun attaching the earth to the sun does our does such a bar exist in the conventional model as it appears as though there ought to be such a bar connecting the earth to the sun now remember space time is not supposedly being warped in a two-dimensional fashion and so the Newtonian version of the lie with the sun being stationary makes some degree of sense, if you ignore the orbital pattern of the moon, of course. However, the Earth orbiting the sun with the solar plane being at a steep angle to the galactic plane in this example, there's simply no plausible explanation which accounts for the path of the Earth around the sun in this type of example. And nowhere do I see a space-time warp that is emanating in all directions from each source of gravity apparent in any of these theoretical models. Again, one source of gravity, the biggest of them all, would be the galactic center, which is totally not felt on Earth or by the moon. The other center of gravity being the sun, which is apparently not felt by the moon. And finally, the center of gravity being the Earth, which is not felt anywhere here on Earth, nor can we feel any of those other centers of gravity, except for the smallest of them all, the moon, which apparently creates our tides. So, making tons and tons of sense here with this whole gravity thing. Um, I should mention that I really do appreciate all of you out there who've been supportive and encouraging, and the entire reason I continue making videos is because of the totally awesome, level-headed, logical people out there whom I was beginning to doubt existed until you guys showed up. So I mean it. I really appreciate you guys and thank you for just simply existing. It means a lot to me. Now, there are other people out there who comment on my work, who obviously have never seen my work, but I also must address these people. One thing most people don't understand about me is that I've been considering the sort of problems I'm just describing here in this video for my entire life, not just for the last few months as a flat earther. I've been totally confounded as to all sorts of issues with the heliocentric Big Bang model of the universe, which is explained in great detail across many of my other videos. Uh, this particular set of videos is obviously pointing towards orbital motion as the focus. Um, the problems and conundrums I've tried to make clear in this video are no longer a mystery to me, nor should they be to you. Again, if they are still a mystery, I suggest you watch the video again. The answer is simple. Our world is flat and stationary, a fixed, immovable plane, above which all the celestial bodies orbit in circles concentric with our North Pole. 
this is the only answer to all of the problems I'm covering in my vids, including this vid with the heliocentric model. I realize this is a tough thing to consider. Six months ago, I would have told you this is the stupidest waste of time ever, a topic I have uh, never would have considered and never would have done so even for a second. So I'm glad that uh, you are even there giving it some thought. I, I do appreciate you at least looking into this. We've been taught for our entire lives to consider anyone questioning the globe earth model is obviously an insane ignoramus. I can assure you the person involved in the conversation who believes they are stuck to a side of a spinning sphere hurling around the sun, flying around the galactic center, zipping through space over a million miles per hour, is the one with major delusions. I can assure you that if you do take the time to learn about this topic, you will surely come to realize that our entire world has been misled into believing a total lie, as we couldn't possibly live on a globe, and the heliocentric model couldn't possibly exist. It's been thoroughly debunked by all means, if you care to look at the evidence, you'll find that there is a never-ending pile of empirical evidence that proves entities such as NASA have actually been lying their asses off, and all, all world military powers have been covering up the fact that we live on a possibly infinite plane and not a finite sphere, and these world military powers will stop at nothing to continue keeping us well away from the southernmost regions of the world and perpetually living on a prison planet Earth. I invite any newcomers to my channel to check out my official Flat Earth Proof playlist, which now contains almost 20 videos at present, and contains a ton of compelling, empirical, undeniable proof that the globe model or heliocentric model of our universe is dead wrong and could not possibly be true. You can also listen to the entire must-read Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe, 1865, in its entirety on my channel in audio book format for your convenience. I really hope that all of you are able to understand the truth of this matter, and I will try to respond to any questions or comments, but please be patient with me. It's nearly impossible to work my jobs make videos, and reply to comments, but I do the best that I can, I promise, and I hope that you understand. Um, thank you all again so much for your support. Please contact me via my partnership email address found in my YouTube channel if you'd like to donate uh, and help me continue making new content. God bless you all and peace.